How mitaku yapi? Hello, everyone. Mitaku yapi technically means um, my relatives. In Lakota, we consider everybody a relative, whether you're really related or not. And, and because in a way, we, we all are. <laughs> We're all grandchildren of our grandmother Earth, so we all are related. Um, as I was saying in the earlier lessons, that uh, when you greet somebody, if they are the same generation as you, you address them as cousins and uh, using the cousin terms. We don't use names, yeah? You, you use kinship terms. And then you talk with each other to find out where they come from, where each of you comes from. You might actually be related in the Teoshpaya way. In the Teoshpaya, it's an extended uh, family system. And uh, you might actually be brothers and sisters. You never know unless you ask. Yeah, Who's your mother? Who's your father? Where do you come from? You know, things like that. If you're not related, then you stay using the um, cousin terms. Okay, when it's when the person you're meeting is of your parents' generation, you address them as auntie or uncle. <laughs> auntie, <laughs> I'm not British. <laughs> I mean, auntie or uncle. I'm from the res, man. <laughs> Nobody says auntie. <laughs> Sounds funny. <laughs> I know in, in America, yeah, people do say that, okay? But on the res, nobody talks like that. It's, people say anti. <laughs> uh, shoot. Anywho, um, so you say either anti or uncle, yeah? And uh, then you do the same thing. Well, actually, they will be asking you because they're older, yeah? Where are you from? Who's your mom? Who's your grandma? grandfather and, and, and father and so forth because if you are in a tiyoshpae you know you, you might it might be closer yeah you, that might be your mother or father in the tiyoshpae way yeah in the tiyoshpae way you have many mothers and many fathers on both sides of your family how does that work okay well your mother and her sisters are all your mothers and their partners are all your fathers. So you see, you could meet somebody who might actually be your father, and you don't know it. <laughs> you might actually meet somebody who's your mother, and you you had no idea. <laughs> it's possible in the Teoshpae way. It is possible. Yeah. Well, that's just half the picture. On your father's side. He and his brothers are all your fathers, too. And their women partners are your other mothers. So you see, you could have a lot of fathers and a lot of mothers in the Teoshpae system. So if you are this way, then you, you change, as you're talking to that person, you change the kinship terms from auntie and uncle to mother and father. Okay? But if you're not uh, related, then you stay with the auntie and uncle terms. And and also, you could be related, and they really are your auntie and uncle, okay? Just to keep that in mind. If the person you're talking to is a generation of your children or before you, um, then you address them as niece and nephew. And then you, you ask them, you know, who, who's your mother, who's your father, and if you find out you are related, then you call them son or daughter, depending on if uh, you are in the same Teoshpae or not. If they're not in the same Teoshpae, then you stay with the niece and nephew. And another thing is they could be really your nieces and nephews. It could be that too, and, and it is the same Teoshpae. Okay, I know it sounds a little bit confusing here. The bottom line is that everybody is using kinship terms when they talk to each other. So that's why they say, um, 
and, and, you know, they call each other as relatives. So that's why in the beginning I said, how mitakuyepi, we are all relatives, whether it's blood or not. Yeah, that's because we are all connected to each other through our sacred centers. And everything has that, everything. Yeah, the, the water, the, the rocks, the fish, the animals, the birds, everything has the sacred center down to the quantum and even inside of that. And outwards too in the universe. Everything is related in this universe. And all universes are related to each other. It's one big connection. Yeah? So... How mitakuya pi means a lot, and also mitakuya oyasi, which also ha is coming from this too. Yeah, everything is related. All my relations. That means everything around you and everything inside of you, even the things you cannot see. Okay, that is that. Okay, now what I want to talk about here is uh, sentence endings. I want to address this right away because. Almost every textbook out there, except mine, mine is called Chante et Tanhan Owoglake, speaking from the heart. And you can find it on eBay, just type in Lakota language, and it has an orange cover. Yeah, there's uh, maybe I'll put a cover of it at the end of this video so you can see what it looks like, and you can order directly from me. And you can contact me and uh, we can set that up, okay? If you're interested, all right? And there's a link below too, by the way, in the description where you can see where my books are on eBay, okay? Lakota language one is available in four, four versions. It's in English, German, Spanish, and now French. So we're getting around the world. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, um, almost every Lakota language book out there has a, a chapter or a paragraph or something on sentence endings, and it says basically what you see on the screen now, okay, where it says, um, okay, these are the male ones, uh, they end their sentences, sentences, <laughs> Oh, uh, shoot. <laughs> they end their sentences with either yellow or yo, or if, um, or sometimes it's wello and wo, and there's a reason why for that. Uh, po is plural, okay? That's plural. When you're talking to a group of people, or when you, you're talking to a lot of people, you say po. And the question at the end, min will say ho but look at the top of this of the screen it says formal okay and i'm going to explain that in a few minutes on the female side they end their sentences with either ye yeah or kshto and if they use we it can also use kshto there too and for plural uh a lot of times you hear be and other times you hear be there's no rule Okay, it just choose with the one you want. Yeah, there is no rule on that. And I'm going to explain that. And f when women end their question, they say, he. Okay. So, now, I'm explaining the formal. This is formal. When people speak formally. Yeah, not formerly, but formally. In the formal way. Like when giving a speech or when there's a high emotion, you know, where, or something is, uh, is really needs to um, be looked after. Yeah, attention. Yeah, kiktapo, wake up. And women will say kiktape or kiktapi. Either one is correct. Do you see what I mean? Or hechushniyo. Don't. Do that. I heard that a lot in my life. <laughs> I know that one really good. <laughs> I, for a while, I thought that was my Indian name. <laughs> Z rugged guy. 
What's your Indian name? Uh, Hetchushni, Hetchushni yo. <laughs> Hetchushni yo emachiapi. <laughs> I am called, don't do that. <laughs> cool Indian name. <laughs> I'll be standing there in Washington, D.C., giving a big speech, and my Indian name is Don't Do That. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> and a woman would say the same sentence, Hetchushni, yeah. Okay? Okay, now, do you see what I mean? The, the really, a lot of emphasis is... Uh, a lot of emotion evolved. The, the whatever happened was a strong emotional event. Don't do that. Get up. Come here. You know. Then you use these endings for sure, or when making a speech, or when you're meeting somebody, and you're kind of like, hmm, I wonder about this person. Then you use these endings. But there's a and this is a big butt. And I don't mean the one I'm sitting on. <laughs> no, seriously. Sorry about that. Seriously. These sentence endings are not used at the end of every sentence. When you hear somebody talk like that, to a fluent speaker, it sounds really funny. If you say da 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 yellow da 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 yellow da 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 yellow, I don't know what da 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 means, but <laughs> that's uh, Pine Ridge Lakota da 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 da. -da. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean just using that as an example, yeah. If you say a yellow or kshto after every single sentence, it really sounds goofy. And fluent speakers absolutely do not speak like that. Sometimes you, when you're saying something, you wait until you're done with the idea and then you put that this endings that you see on the screen, then you put that ending at the end of your sentence. Okay? Not after every one. Alright? That is a really important thing to remember. In most Lakota language books, they say you have to use these all the time. And that is not true. Now, the reason why these other books say that is because all those books were written by people who have a, a really strong Christian influence. It's, it's sad to say, but it is true. When you go to church, everything has to be this way. You must do this, you must do this, and this is the only way. Even to the point where they say, our religion is the right one. If you don't belong to our religion, then you will go to hell. Then you will, you know, whatever. You will not be with us. So it's a dual a duality, yeah, either them or us. Dualism is when you see things only in two perspectives, the one you like and the one you don't like. And you say the one you don't like is they're the bad ones, they're the evil ones. We must prove that we are right and then they will follow us. And if they don't follow us, then we must destroy them. Think of all the world's problems that are caused by that kind of thinking. That is duality. So when Lakota books and Lakota teachers are saying, all men must use these sentence endings at every one of their sentences, and females must use these ones at the end of their sentence endings, do you see? That's the same dualistic thinking that I just described to you from the churches. A lot of Indians today, I should, I can safely say most Indians or natives or whatever you want to call us, are either we're Christian or we're Christian influenced. And, and so that's why they say that. And this is really not the way Lakota is spoken. 
this is really incorrect to say that all men have to say this and all women must say this because that saying either you're a man or you're a woman and that is not true in the ancient Lakota world there are seven genders it all depends on what's in your mind because I always say on my on these videos and shows reality begins within in the Lakota way there are seven genders okay now you have basically three body types well let's look at the male body first the male body with the male mind is one gender a male body with the female mind is a second gender or I should say another gender and the, a male body can sometimes have both a male and female mind now, these are the sacred people and that's three genders now let's look at the female body the same concept or principle happens there the body is female the mind is female is it's a woman the, again the body is female but the mind is male here you have a transgender sometimes this female body will have both the male and female minds again that's the sacred one so here you have six genders what do you think the seventh one is the seventh one is when the body is male and female at the same time it's both a scientific term hermaphrodite but these are really really sacred that's the seventh gender so when somebody says all males must speak this way and all females must speak this way this is really disrespecting the other five genders and this is not the way our ancestors talked and this again is coming from the Christian brainwashing that happened at the beginning of the reservation times so that's at starting late 1800s and early 1900s then comes a time period where a lot of people reject the church but there's still dualistic thinking there's still Christian influence and this is an easy way to figure out if somebody is this way ask them what they think about gay people ask them what they think about transgender people if they say oh this is bad or they make fun of them or they joke with each other and say ah you fag ah you're just gay you see when somebody talks like that even when joking that shows you that they're not like the ancestors they're more like the western world okay so to talk Lakota to keep that power of the language you have to not speak it from that Western perspective so when you're talking about sentence endings they have the male and female and this applies to the transgenders what I teach is if the mind is male then they say these so the body could be male or female it's the mind same thing with the female the mind has to be female and the body could be male or female it's the mind now those who have both minds they can use either gender they can say either, any one of these because their mind is both and said that argument also applies to those that are that have both genders that's how I teach it all right now when people are in the informal setting or a celebration or um, you know among friends and relatives many times the gender endings are not used at all and when people ask questions everybody uses he let daku he he to we he he what's your what are you called what's your name when a man is saying he to somebody he's extending friendship in this informal setting so that is how it is and another thing is singing when men and women are singing together then generally they all use the male gender endings 
I translated uh, a Christmas song for a popular native singer by the name of Jana. And she comes from the Lumbee Nation. And the song was called Hark the Herald's Angels Sing. In the Lakota, when you sing, you want to sing so that everybody sings with you. Okay? So they use the male gender endings. It's not because men are better or smarter. It doesn't mean that at all. It's just so everybody sings together every note. Okay? That's the reason why. It's no big deal. If a woman, if she sings by herself, if she's alone, then she can use the female gender endings because she's singing by herself. But with Jana, she was singing for the world. So I have her using the male endings because this is the way it is. And you hear the sacred songs and sing them. You're going to hear it like that in, inside of a Inipi or Wayang Wachipi or whatever. That you'll hear men and women singing together. They want every note to be sung together. That's the Teoshpe way of thinking. Okay? And again, an informal, really nice, comfortable settings and situations. No gender endings are used. And when men ask the questions, or they will use he. And, and women always use he. Okay? That is the way our ancestors were. Now, when you look at the ancestral perspective, you see there's more than two perspectives. Yeah? But when other Lakota language books and, and Lakota teachers are saying, men have to say this, and women have to say that, See, that sounds like a Catholic or a refugee from the Catholic Church. He still has that Catholic way of thinking, that dualistic way of thinking. All right? So when I teach students and when, when we get to know each other really well, we go to this, what I like to call the Teoshpai way of talking. And the Teoshpai way of talking is what I just explained. That when they're talking to each other in comfortable, nice situations, gender endings are not used, are very little used, not oftenly used. Am I saying that right? They're not used very often, okay? And when people ask questions, everybody says, he. When they sing, they use the male endings. When they sing together, when the Teoshpai sings together, they use the male endings. And it's not because men are better. Okay? It has nothing to do with that at all. That's Western thinking that says, oh, one gender is more important than the other. Okay? So, that is what I call Teoshpai way of talking. Okay? But in the formal setting, you're know, like in a council meeting or something is really, like I said earlier, then male-minded people will use the male endings, female-minded people will use the female endings. So, if somebody comes up to me, let's say a man comes up to me, if I don't even know him, and he says, He's speaking in a formal way. He says, he's asking me, what are you called? In other words, what is your name? So, then I know he's keeping a safe distance. If he says, It's the same question, but there's another intention. He's extending friendship to me. He wants to really know who I am. Do you see the difference? Yeah? Do you, now do you see the Teoshpai way of speaking and the formal way of speaking? There's purposes for both. So you see, this is how... The ancient way is, there's several perspectives, there's always more than one way to do something. What a lot of Lakota language books say today, like what I said earlier, that all men must only use these and women must only use those. Like I said, that's coming from a, a Christian way of thinking, a dualistic way of thinking, which is dogmatic. For those of you that don't know what that word means, dogma means something can only be done one way 
and if you try another way it's wrong see that's the foundation thinking or thought behind religion christian religion and and, and islam and, and judaism and, and everything that comes from that kind of thinking but in the lakota way we are not dogmatic there's always going to be exceptions there's always going to be another way depending on that situation this is why we have we also had women warrior societies that is true we are not matriarchal we are not patriarchal we are something different totally different and our language is the same way so when a lakota teacher says all men must speak this way and all women must speak that way that is dogmatic and this is showing great disrespect to those that are that don't fit that you see what i mean and that is not the ancestral way and when you when people talk like that they're taking power away from the language in fact they're they're disrespecting they're dishonoring the language when they try to force everything into this and that when that is not lakota that is not in line with the spirit of what lakota means lakota means allies that we respect each other's differences that we learn to agree to disagree sometimes we don't always have to agree but when when somebody says men must speak like this and women must speak like that then they're saying and if you don't agree you're wrong and uh, so when i encounter that i just say hey okay i respect you you know you're on the journey and i'm on a journey but i'm going to go this way <laughs> you can stay here <laughs> yeah um i don't tell them they're wrong because we're all on journeys in our lives and i'm not one to judge anybody but what i am here to say is that this is the way of the ancestors and what i just explained to you it includes people who are transgender for example it includes everybody but when teachers say that um, all men must speak this way and all women must speak that way then this is not including everybody do you see what i mean nature doesn't try to force anything when you try to force all men to say, speak this way and all women to speak that way it's bringing a dualistic energy a dualistic way of thinking into the language and then the language loses its power it's not a language of of love anymore it's not coming from from the heart anymore it's coming only from the mind and it should come from both places do you see what i mean so just take this into consideration and um you choose to learn the way you want to and as i was saying earlier uh with my students as we become closer in knowing each other we we switch to the teoshpe way of speaking that that i explained earlier because that's kind of what we're becoming we're becoming a certain type of teoshpe so i'll let you think about that okay thank you very much for um taking the time to listen to the show i really really appreciate it and i just wanted to put this in you know with the uh, concerning sentence endings now and and then next time we'll continue this dialogue yeah that we're doing uh what i like to do is uh, when i teach lakota language i teach how to start it a dialogue and how to end the dialogue so you know those two <laughs> then we learn the middle part yeah what what comes in what are your hobbies what do you like to do yeah and we're going to also learn where do you come from and where's who's your mother who's your father and all all those kind of things and talk about the weather maybe we'll go to uh, mcdonald's or some place like that <laughs> in the dialogue okay and then uh, time to go home and and, and uh, see you tomorrow and all that kind of thing 
Okay, well, that's what I'm going to do with this, these mini lessons, just to give you ideas. And again, if you want uh, to really intense one-to-one -one personal Lakota language instruction directly with me, I do have a virtual classroom online, and you just have to contact me. You contact me on Facebook, David Little Elk. I'm the only David Little Elk, I think. Yeah, you can send me a message from there. Or send me a message here. All right? All right. So, again, thank you very much for taking time to listen. And until next time. Doksha Ake.